beginning she can't fight she just needs to like hold back the enemy jungler and then eventually when she hits level six she can like all in somebody using all of her abilities potentially flash ult everything to kill somebody and then at some point she just becomes this like character that can just qe somebody and kill them straight up no need for charm no need for anything and if you have dark harvest that like third stage comes earlier okay so that's the really cool thing now if in your games you're playing with dark harvest and oftentimes your mid game is like going poorly and earlier you almost got some kills but you're not quite finishing them off you need to switch to electric you because it's going to do more damage okay yeah so that really depends on how your games are going like in my elo right now games are like there's so many people dying left and right on both teams because everybody's like doing assassins and stuff it's so crazy that dark harvest just works okay all right um now speaking of the sorcery tree yeah i think that absolute focus is absolutely necessary oh, okay um but the the second one is up to you so if you can click on scorch right now and we'll we'll look at what options there are so clearly the first two nullifying orb and mana flow band you don't want they don't give us any kind of damage or whatnot um ultimate hat is really nice um the only thing is that like we need to give up one of the other runes to get it um the reason that ultimate hack is super nice is because in the mid game you play very differently if you have your ult up or if you don't have your ult up right. and you know ultimate and the other thing is that the way that ultimate hat works is if you build a lot of cdr it's kind of bad because um they stack multiplicatively. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, like they go on each other, kind of. Yeah, so just to explain it, to make sure you understand how it works entirely, if you have 40% cooldown reduction, Ultimate Hat only effectively gives you 9 extra percent. Okay. So, so like the more cooldown reduction you get the less effective ultimate hat is and what that means is that for builds that have very little cooldown reduction like you're building uh death cap void staff you know all that kind of stuff ultimate hat is pretty cool it, it makes your ultimate a manageable cooldown now that's only really good until you hit level 16 which is really late in the game but at level 16 you don't need ultimate hat that much Okay. And I'll give you like a description of what I think of all these stuff. The second mastery is up to you. The keystone is up to you, how you feel, how you're playing. And the second mastery in Arcane is up to your playstyle. Okay. Um, just to talk about celerity, or in a, yeah, yeah, celerity and the one to the left of it, I forgot, transcendence, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, the problem with Transcendence is that it's activated only at level 10, which in some games you barely reach level 10 because they're done very quickly, and I just feel like it's a pretty late um, activation time. Now, some people really like that mastery. I know from my chat people quite like it, and that's mostly people who like to use their Q and E and W more often. Okay. Um, the way that I play, I kind of use those abilities and then fall back into stealth and usually just wait them out. I don't care that it's long. I just play around that. Right. I think I take Transcendence on Elise, if I remember correctly, just because I know like your combo is like the only thing you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and I don't know I don't know how Elise works at all so I can't really comment on that but 
Uh, all right, so Scorch. By the way, water walking is an interesting idea, right? But the reason that I don't like water walking is because uh, a lot of the fights that I take are specifically in mid lane, and I'll show you later why. So it's okay. either I'm ganking a lane or I take a fight in mid lane. The time when you really should be fighting in the river is like when you're taking Dragon and Baron. So that's when water walking would be really strong. But besides that, it just doesn't fit my playstyle. Okay. Um, now the reason that water walking is a good rune though is because oftentimes you do have to run between the different lanes and like having 25 movement speed is no joke, it's really good. Um, I think the ability power is just an added bonus and somebody in my chat pointed out that there's a neat interaction between Evelyn's kit and that mastery where uh, I forget how much ability power it gives you, I think it's like 25, 24 ish. Um, but your passive, you know, it has a maximum HP threshold based mm -hmm. on your AP. So basically when you go into the river, you can heal 75 extra health if you're low. Okay. So that's like a little cool thing. Um, and then I, in my opinion, the other, the best choices are going to be either Scorch or Gathering Force. And I les left them for last kind of to explain what I like the most. Last okay. for best. Um, so, Gathering Storm is a better mastery than Scorch. Straight up, it's just better. It gives you a lot of EP. Now, in North American solo queue, by 20 minutes into the game, when Gathering Storm is really good, we pretty much have already lost the game. <laughs> yeah. I'll admit to that. <laughs> like, maybe not, like, you in particular, but half the time, one lane is so ungodly fed yep. that, like, it just doesn't matter anymore, you know? Yeah. I, so... I have all those games. <laughs> exactly. Like, when, like, the fed Urgot, and then they're pinging me to gank, and I'm just like, dude, if I fight him, it he gets two kills. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> dude, that's smart. If you can not listen to your teammates begging for help, that's amazing. Like... Well, I tell them straight out. I'm just like, dude, if you lose lane, I think it's better if I gank winning lanes. <laughs> it's 100% true. It's 100... You should avoid feeders like the plague, dude. Maybe yeah. if, like, it's a, like... Top lane, Urga? Hell no. Let him take yeah. the inhib tower, dude. Like, no. Mid lane where it's like a squishy person? Alright, maybe we can like stun him, make something happen. I don't know. Great. And if I'm Elise, usually I'm fighting the enemy jungler in their own jungle, so. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Don't listen to people doing that kind of shit. That's like the first and biggest mistake that all junglers do. I'm guilty of it. Not as much anymore because. I'm currently Diamond 3, and those people have figured out that if they're feeding, they just have to suck it up. Yep, play um, safe. Not even play, they just like leave light. <laughs> I don't know, they just stop complaining. They know what to do when they're behind. Um, but okay, so finishing thoughts. Uh, Gathering Storm is better. Even Water Walking maybe is better than Scorch in most times, but not in preseason, not in North American solo queue right now. And the other thought is that if you're going to be running Dark Harvest, you're missing out on early damage from Electrocute, and taking Scorch kind of makes up for that. Taking Absolute Focus and Scorch is just going to be a lot of early game damage before you really get any items or levels. Okay. Alright, any questions about runes? No, I, I think I'm going to try your rune page because it seems like it would work for me better. Because, yeah. I mean, uh, in I don't you'll probably see in my replay, but, like, usually I play Evelyn like a farm bot till 6, unless if, mm. like, there's something I can get for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, because I think, I think in the replay that I'm going to send you or show you that I think I flashed on Caitlyn at, like, level 3 and I got her. So then it was fine. That's perfect. But, um, and then I just went to farming till 6, so... And I have a question from chat, let me see. Gathering Storm can be better the lower elo you go, it seems. 
that matches last longer there but I think gold and up it's already not that good so yeah if this is this is true you do you definitely have to adjust your runes for what you're seeing your average game is like if okay. people don't know how to finish out the game then maybe gathering star becomes better um, in my experience they just kind of like group up after they're super fed and push down your nexus so that's why scorch is good for me and still in gold elo i get those 30 minute arams <laughs> <laughs> dude it still happens uh, <laughs> gathering sword <laughs> might be for you dude <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so you could play around with that maybe take electric you and gathering storm one game something that i would say though is avoid taking too much stuff that focuses on the end game because evelyn's weakest point is one to five one to six rather once you hit level six you're strong but if you kind of sacrifice too much early game for your late game you're not going to be able to get those level three flash kills right and right. those are just so important okay all right that's that's good enough now okay. let's right okay load into a practice duel match right now there's something i need to show you okay um this is really important it's about how Evelyn's stealth works. And while you load in, I'm just going to start talking about it. Okay. Um, Evelyn's stealth is interacts a little bit strangely with some um, structures and like vision in general. So the only thing that can reveal her is champion vision and pink ward vision and towers okay but there's yeah okay I, I won't say anything else it's just it'll be very self-explanatory once uh you load into the practice tool all right <laughs> okay i thought your game like froze for a second it, it's kind of slow but i think that's just because of the screen sharing yeah, that's right. As long as you get decent FPS and decent ping, we should be fine. <laughs> the bronze shuffle mid. Yep. Uh, I hate when... Yeah, Chad's just saying that I think they've had similar experiences to you where everybody just groups up mid lane and then the ARAM. <laughs> Well, and I'm sure everybody in chat can sympathize with me as Evelyn specifically. When everybody groups up mid, you feel so useless because you're trying to dive the back line and then your tanks just die too fast and you're like, It's okay. harder. It's definitely harder. I'll go over that too. There's stuff you could do to like make that, that shit easier. Now, I did see like in the Evelyn mains Reddit, uh, people are going rushing death cap after their jungle item. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Should I be doing that? Because I've been doing like Proto Belt and I and Lich Bane and I hate Proto Belt as an Don't, item. Yeah, I know. Like that's the first <laughs> thing I discovered. Just stop. You can stop building Proto Belt. You can throw it in the trash. Uh, if, you, if you ever <laughs> see my item build for uh, Evelyn, I just have a special like section all the way at the bottom for Proto Belt and it's titled Trash. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't get it on a lease either. Like I just think it's garbage. It's just like, here's the thing, it does okay damage, it has nice stats, um, but it, there's like, generally I just feel like you don't need it on Evelyn, and when you use the active, you're like CCing yourself for 0.25 seconds or something. Yep. And I think it's super important, especially with the enemy team being grouped up as 5, to not do that. Yeah, for sure. Like you were saying, when they're all together, it's so hard to actually get a proper fight off on them. And it's usually you flashing in, using your E and using your ult, <laughs> and then you're gone. Yep. My my friend that I was doing with, uh, duoing with, he got mad because he was playing Orn. He got mad at me, but I got a double kill. Because what I did was they were fighting in River, and I went all the way around the Dragon Pit to go behind them. And mm -hmm. he died, and he's just like, dude, what are you doing? And then I got a double kill, and I'm like, cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Feels bad, man. Yeah, well, when you do that kind of stuff, try to spam ping your team back. Okay. That's the only thing I got to say. Like, pings are your friends. Alright, before you leave the base, um, go grab a bunch of gold. And How give yourself a bunch I of levels. Okay, I, uh, I never use this thing, so... Yep. And then levels... Right. Yep, there you go. Alright, and now buy, like, five death caps and a Lich Bane. Oh my god. <laughs> this is LCS build right here. Yeah, dude, guaranteed to win. This is what you want, dude. <laughs> Who needs boots, man? You know, I mean, Lich Bane gives you movement speed. There's runes for that now. I think if you press Shift S, you can teleport to mid lane. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Wait. Teleport. Come on, let me do it. I don't okay. know why. You just got okay. Well, you can walk there. Shift S plus left click should work. Are you right clicking by accident, maybe? Left click. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's not letting me. I don't know why. Uh. Weird. Whatever. It might be something with my abilities, because I do have that, because I used to play a lot of support, and I played, like, Lulu and stuff, so I do have, like, indicator stuff on that probably shouldn't be on. Mm, I don't know. Weird. I don't know. Yeah, casting with indicators generally makes you slower, so you might want to turn that off. But, um, for now, just activate uh, HP, auto-refresh HP. Where is that? It's the second one from the top. Whoa, this okay. is so weird. I don't know if it's like a screen share thing or something, but the like UI keeps on flashing. Weird. Oh, should um, I just like level this? Yeah. Whatever, you could put in levels. I was just like trying to get you more levels so you do more damage or whatever. And then just go and right click on the tower and kill the tower really quick. Which, this one? Just the mid, yeah. Yeah, just the mid turret. No, you you, just, just, it's fine. Just go right click on it and you're, you'll kill it pretty quickly. You have a lot of AP. Don't worry, it won't kill you. <laughs> you got, you got inv invulnerability on or whatever. Well, not really, but close enough. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, minions showed up. You're good. You could keep, keep for Lich Bane or whatever. Um, then, if you look at the, bottom part of the left panel oh, this is really trippy man it, I know that it's it's definitely just something to do with the practice tool because that's all that's flashing okay <laughs> that's so weird whatever um, now get to where it says spawn allied no spawn enemy dummy it's the third one no, no no you can go back up to the top panel here and it's the third one from the bottom that one, yep. And then put one right on the other side of the tower. Uh, a little bit closer, so... I don't know why this isn't working. It's not working at all for you? I'm trying, but it's like... That's alright. Here, uh, I'll do it for you. That's, that's not a problem, I'll just do it for you. You can... That's so weird, I don't know why it does that. I wonder if it's something with Skype or something. I don't know. Um, exit out of there. I'll just give you the link to my stream, and you can look at my screen, basically. Okay. So, just for now, end the screen share, and I'll send you the link. Okay. Okay. Chat. Here we go. Uh... There you go. <clears throat> it might be faster to do this way anyway. There you go. Alright. Play. Training. Practice tool. Confirm. You might have to mute me on the stream or whatever so you don't hear me twice. Okay. And start game. I 
I don't know what was going on with the practice tool there. That looked really weird. I don't. I mean, clearly, Cody, you wouldn't see it on your end. Uh, yeah. But for me, like, actually, it was like just flashing over and over again. It would be like there for a second, and then like flash for two seconds. It was really weird. All right, I'm gonna mute your Skype. So then I can just, or should I just mute you? You should on mute the stream Twitch? because the stream is going to be okay. like two seconds behind or something. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah, not that's... like telephoning in the old Stone Age or whatever. Right. I'll uh, I'll give you that good follow. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think this is maximum amount of gold. That's interesting. See, teleporting works for me. That's how it should be. Um, where is fast forward? Ah, here we go. If I get the minions, it's just gonna be faster. All right. And then target dummy here. All right, so. Uh, you see my screen right now? Everything yep. good? Wait, did you actually... Did you already follow me? I didn't get a notification for it. Right. You should be smart zombie 74. I can, I can post in chat. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> anyway, check this out. Um, so the target dummies, they can see you like regular champions can, right? And you get the little indicator, whatever. Now, if you get behind this tower, they don't have line of sight on you. And I hope your mind is blown because I promised you that your mind would be blown. And yeah. this is what I wanted to show you. <laughs> That's so weird. So, so I'm I'm assuming what you're getting at is you would like stand behind the tower and then they can't see you. Yes. So in the mid game, that's why I was saying uh, I don't really like water walking because this in the late game, this is where I find my fights. Right here. Uh, right here. They still can't see me. Like all around these little nooks and crannies. Actually, uh, in like uh, last game or something or two games ago, I killed somebody when they were standing. They were recalling like right there. And I just went QE over wall and I killed him. So like there's a bunch of stuff that you want to do with your stealth to kind of work around um, what your enemy can and can't see. So the main ones is here. Uh, well, any tower would do. And if you can see, like this is pretty generous. You can be, you could be quite far behind, like cl quite close to them without them being able to see you. The other place is here. Um, it's, it is a wall, so maybe it would be a little bit more self-explanatory, but people kind of forget. Oh, I forgot to spawn the target on me. See, he can't, he can't see me at all. Uh, inhibitors work that way. Even right now they can see me because of the tower, but if the tower is down, you can stand behind inhibitors even if they're still up and they won't be able to see you. Now, the reason that people don't realize this is because normal vision, you can see through inhibitors. See, I can see what's going on on the other side of the inhibitor, but the enemy still wouldn't be able to see me. And the reason why is because this vision on the other side is like weird. It's not actually from your character or something like that. Like, it's like the structure is transparent or translucent but not like it doesn't give you away i i don't know why it's just how riot coded it it's kind of like why talon can jump over it too maybe i don't on honestly i have no idea how this shit works but <laughs> this is just how it is right like the guy there if you're standing right here normally he just does not see you the tower is cheating but normally he does not see you now the other thing is let's say i'm standing in this bush right and I didn't mean to spawn and target him here. Let's say I'm standing in this bush, and there's the enemy support here, and she drops a green ward into the bush, right? You okay. should not panic, because she can't actually see you. Let's say this is the enemy green ward. She can't see you. 
because green wards do not reveal you and she her champion itself does not have vision of the bush it's just a green ward that has the vision of the bush okay so and you said you've played quite a bit of old evelyn right right okay i just want to make sure that i don't like overwhelm you because you said you played four games of the new evelyn um so this Are is like really important okay what were you gonna say Oh, I, just, I don't know if any if you knew or anybody in chat knew of a guy named Heinrich. I used to watch him a lot back with old Evelyn. I actually, I didn't hear him, but these guys might know more. They've been around Reddit and stuff. <laughs> I'm really bad with watching streams, actually. Yeah, so Bush... Oh, right, right, right. So there's that's another thing to point out. I almost forgot. Thank you, chat. Um, Bushes work the same way. So okay. let's say, let's say they have a green ward in the bush, and you're standing right here. They won't be able to see you because the green ward is obstructing their like true vision. Okay. So this is how you're gonna find most of your picks in the mid game and then the late game, where you can actually get into E range and kind of pop them really quick. At the point where you can just kill them with your Q and E without your W proccing. You just you just wait for them to walk up and then boom, they're fucking dead. You can't do anything. Like okay. this is a lot of damage. Well, I have a weird build. Alright, so I wanted to tell you that really quick. Um now So you, so you could like use that I mean I don't think you'd really be doing this as Evelyn at like level two or three, but I was gonna say what you could do is you could invade the enemy's red Junk, uh, buff with the bush because they usually like ward that bush on the curve of it and then you could like stand on the end of the bush and they wouldn't see you with old Evelyn I used to do that shit literally every single game <laughs> okay uh, let me show you with old Evelyn this is what I did every game spawn I'd be like here it's 45 seconds of the game or something everybody just arrived with home guards I would walk up to here like this, checking to see if they could see me. If they couldn't, I walked past. I went here, and I did the same thing. I'd just be very careful walking up. And then as soon as I got to here, at 55 seconds, I would ward this bush and walk away. And then when I saw the mid laner there, I would wrap around and go smite their buff. Every single fucking game. <laughs> Free buff. And then I would go to their red buff and kill them at their red buff. That was the old Evelyn experience for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, dude, it felt really good. I definitely, the last day before the rework, I like did that shit all day long to kind of give her a send off. Make people rage for one last time. Now, let's, as a quick caveat, you would not be doing that on the new Evelyn because before level six, you literally run for your life when you see the enemy jungler. You are you do not fight the enemy jungler before level 6 because he will kill you. Right. Even if you get your charm and your entire combo off, you'll bring him down to like 40% HP. That target dummy actually just scared me. <laughs> <laughs> you'll bring them down to like 40% HP and then you're on cooldown for 8 seconds or for 4 seconds usually. And during those four seconds, they have more reasonable cooldowns and they will kill you. Okay. So, while I'm in the practice tool, before we get to looking at your replay, I'm going to talk about items really quick, okay? Here's sure. the... Here's a special spot for the special item. Uh, anyway. I haven't tried out Red Smite with the new runes. Uh, Blue Smite is really good on Evelyn because you can set up ganks by walking up to people using your W and Blue Smite at the exact same time and then just running at them. Okay. Uh, Red Smite is... It's if you're trying to do some kind of tanky build and you need extra damage. That's where Red Smite would come in, because Red Smite does more damage than Blue Smite all the time. 
Yeah, Red Smite does a lot of damage. So Evelyn doesn't have the sustained damage in her kit, really. She has the hate spikes, but generally, at least I like to use them right away for the extra damage. Red Smite would give you the sustained damage that you're missing. But Blue Smite's utility is just ungodly. Okay. I take uh I take red smite on Elise usually, but that's just because like I one v one their jungler all the time. Sorry, I was shooting an apple. I thought I'd be able to do so much faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's fair. I would only play Evelyn with blue smite until you get a hang of her. Right, that's why I played her with uh in the replay. I got blue smite. Cool. Now, as far as early game items go, Doran's or Dark Seal is a lot of free AP if you're doing well. So if you're already slightly ahead, you might want to consider taking the Dark Seal to kind of propel yourself even further. Um, yeah, and the chat agrees. They usually do blue smite. Um, so this is kind of like a win more item and okay. then there's some like a couple of situations where you upgrade it into a magi's um, usually that's only if your team is doing well though dark seal is if you're doing well if your team is doing well you can even get a magi's uh, magi's is risky though because the next five minutes after you buy it are really crucial if you die you just lost a lot of AP and a lot of gold yeah. So there's that. Um, I don't know if you heard about Dark or Frostfang. Yeah, I, I've seen people talk about it on the Reddit page, but I've never tried it or anything. Okay. Um, let me just toggle towers invincible so that they don't die. Um, so the cool thing about hey, I'm not AFK. Oh. If you fall behind it's okay for you to get a spell thieves reason why is because after like five or ten minutes it's gonna pay for itself and it's basically gonna give you a little bit of extra damage and more gold later on into the game so by buying a spell thieves or even a frost fang if you're really behind it's like saying I understand that I fucked up I understand that I'm behind and I'm okay with sacrificing some power in the next five to ten minutes in order to be stronger when it's important. Okay. And um, the cool interaction with Frostfang is that I can buy it real quick for you to show you. It doesn't go on cooldown when you attack jungle minions. So here, if I kill some of teleport, please. There you go. If I kill some minions in the lane, it goes on a really long cooldown. See, it's like 60 seconds and stuff, and it stacks with its with other things. So the more minions you kill, the bigger cooldown you get. So like, look, 93 seconds before I can actually proc the tribute passive and get my extra gold off of it. Uh, but let me fast forward here. Probably shouldn't have done that many stacks. But killing jungle minions doesn't do that. So, okay. check this out. I'll just kill these and see it doesn't go on cooldown. So, what you can do is you can farm your jungle like normal and then still go gank and in your ganks you get an extra 45 gold. Just for showing up. Like, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Okay. So that's Frostfang. I can send you this... What's it called? I can send you this item build or whatever if you want it later but that's that's important okay. right now alright so that's your early game options now in an average game you maybe have you know you have your blue smite maybe you have dark seal level 1 boots and then generally you want to upgrade into a runic echoes as fast as you can maybe buy a couple of pink wards now from here you can do a bunch of different things. Um, 
usually, actually before that, usually I upgrade to tier 2 boots as well, right after. So huh. this is like every single game. Maybe instead of this thing, you'll have this thing, but generally you're trying to get to this point. Okay. Um, after that, you have choices. If you look at the enemy items and they have MR, like let's say they're a little bit ahead and they already bought MR, you might want to just start building into a Void Staff because the Void Staff is going to give you the most damage against MR. Okay. Um, if, so you were talking about Rabadons, right? Right. Rabadons is an amazing item. Uh, it will do the most damage out of any item you can buy and um, it scales really like just having it up by itself is going to do the most damage out of any item and the more AP you get the harder it's going to scale into the late game. Now the issue with it is that it's also the most expensive item that you're going to buy out of anything you choose. So oftentimes when I go to buy Rabadons in a game where I'm not ahead, um, I find it that I need just a little bit more damage or just a little bit more utility to kind of like impact the game drastically. Maybe I kill their carry or something like that. Uh, it, it like makes the difference between me killing their carry at 20 minutes into the game and me not killing their carry because I don't have my completed item yet. So Rabadons is really a good choice if when you back you can buy I would say like a Neasley Large plus the Blasting Wand. If you're that ahead, and it's not too hard to be that ahead, like I do it quite often. If you're that ahead, it's probably a good idea to start building the Rabadons. But otherwise, if you can only afford like a Blasting Wand, you may want to do something else. Okay. Now. There are a couple of different paths you can take. Um, Void Staff Rush is pretty good. Uh, if your team is doing poorly, Void Staff Rush is really cool too because you know that later on in the game people are going to start building MR. And it's kind of like, one, it does a lot of damage, and two, you're preemptively destroying their MR before they even get it. So it scales right. really well. If you're behind, Void Staff is really cool too because it's going to give you the most damage for the amount of gold that you spend. So it's it's like usually if you're really falling behind, Void Staff is probably the best second item that you can take. Okay. Now if the game is somewhat even and you want like a bigger power spike, you just want to spend a little bit of gold and have that impact in the game, Haunting Guys is actually a really good go-to item because the 15 ma extra magic penetration is going to mean that you bring targets with like 70 MR-ish, pretty much all squishies, all carries to 0 MR and you start doing true damage. Okay. Be between your W, your boots, this thing and sudden impact or whatever it's called, the mastery, you bring them down to like 0. So oh, yeah. it's a lot of damage. Gotcha. And um, let me just... I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, the only other thing I would particularly want to say is Hextech Revolver. If you're really, if you really fucked up, if you're like zero two, zero three, and you're like, you're like ready to surrender, you want to buy a Hextech Revolver and not upgrade it because Hextech Revolver, from everything I've tried out on target dummies and stuff, it deals the most damage out of any item, but it's just super clunky because it takes up an item slot. That's basically the worst thing. And you can't really build it into um, Hextech Protobell because Protobell's trash. You can't right. build it into a gun blade because we can't use the AD and it's too expensive. Um, right. So it's just really clunky. Usually when I do get it and we kind of recover and get into the late game, I buy a gun blade as a sixth item because it actually does a lot of damage as a sixth item. Okay. So yeah. Um, I'm gonna, uh, hey, uh, somebody's at my door right now. Uh, just give me one sec. No problem. All right. 
feel like I'm talking a lot. I should just get to his replay and kind of look at his play, because I'm kind of like, <laughs> I feel like a teacher in college just kind of lecturing about the subject. <laughs> I'm just going to mention the other items quickly in passing, and then we'll get to actual gameplay. There's so much that I want to tell him, but at the same time, I know that if I just started talking about the early game, mid game, and just kind of like talking about it, telling him, like lecturing about it, he's just going to forget everything. It's not actually going to help. Alright, I'm back. Alright. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no problem. I was just talking to chat and I was saying how I feel like I'm a <laughs> like I'm in college right now giving a lecture. Um I I'm gonna just say a couple more things about the items and then we can move on to your replay so that Okay. It's kinda of better that way. How, what kind of replay do you have by the way? Is it just in your client? Is it um do you have like an can... OPGG replay? It's in my client, is that okay? Or... That's totally fine, yeah. It's fine. Okay. Alright, so... I'll just give you a couple of sample builds. Um... Hey, where am I? Come here. So yeah, if I'm behind... And I have like a Frost Fang after that, I might build a Void Staff. If it's mid-game and the enemy doesn't have any MR, uh, I could build a Haunting Guys and then... Maybe even get like a Banshee's Veil or something like that. Banshee's Veil is a really important item for Evelyn because late game in team fights, like like you've experienced it yourself, you just have to flash in, eat, and ult out safely. Yep. Banshee's Veil will prevent like Lulu's from pel polymorphing you, Alistar's from knocking you up, all that bullshit. Okay. Um, a lot of people get Lich Bane. The reason I usually don't get it is because it's a full damage item. And, um,. It's like damage and utility. I prefer if I'm just going for damage to buy a death cap, because it okay. just does more damage. Uh, right. But a lot of people like Lich Bane. It's really good for hitting Baron and turrets and stuff like that. It's just it's not really my thing, so I don't usually build it. Isn't it true that like old Evelyn used to proc it way more? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, dude. Because like old Evelyn's Q cooldown was pretty much Lich Bane's cooldown, so. You, it, it worked really well with each other. The new Q, you'd have to like stagger your hate spikes, which I hate doing. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of my thing about it. Zonia's versus people who build a lot of lethality, and versus like Zed and Kane. Abyssal okay. Mask is an option if you have a lot of AP damage on your team and on the enemy team. And in some situations, it actually does the same amount of damage as other damage items, which is crazy. And okay. I haven't been building Dead Man's or this too much lately, but whatever. So yeah, your bread and butter is like Death Cap, uh, Banshees, sometimes Zonia's, Void Staff is amazing, and like that kind of shit. Okay. Cool. Just for a quick second, I'm going to look at my match history and just see what kind of builds I actually have been going. Just to prove to you that I wasn't lying. Um, oh yeah, you can sometimes upgrade to Leandries if they have tanks. And you already bought a Haunting Guys. I wouldn't buy Leandries just because though. See, I probably make that mistake with Elise because like every game I go like Haunting Guys, Tabby, Leandres, like every single game. That's something that you really need to be careful of. I'm guilty of it too, is just like getting comfortable with one build and then doing it every single game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Burgers, do you actually have replays? I could do your games right after this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Okay, so, see, I've been building Deathcap a lot, it's been working. The reason why is because the games are super, like, killy, and, like, you get the gold. Void Staff here, I was behind, so I must have built uh, Frost Fang in this game, and a Revolver, we must have been really behind. Yeah, whatever. Alright, I won't go too much into this. If you're up against a Malzahar, buy a Quicksilver Sash after your second item. Okay. Fuck Malzahar, dude. <laughs> yeah. Alright. 
Let's get to your your uh, replay. Okay. So should I just start screen sharing and then play it? Yeah. Hey, can you see it? I will in a second here, it's loading. Uh, let me bring it up. It actually it failed to load. Here, let me restart the call and then we can do it again. Sometimes I think Skype has a bug. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello? Hey. There we go. Hey. I hope it's not me that's lagging. I wonder if... I really hope that my internet can't handle watching your screen <laughs> and streaming at the same it time. It could be me. It could be me, I'm not sure. I think so. Okay. Can you see it? No, not yet. That's where it worked the first time. Hmm. All right, this isn't working. Let's go back to Discord then. Okay. Yeah. Is this working? Yes. Perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna uh, quit Skype then. And yeah, looks like it works perfectly. Okay, cool. How are you doing? I feel like I talked at you quite a lot here. Was that helpful? Yeah, no, it was. Okay, good. I'm gonna probably uh, do the item slots kind of like that and the custom item stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright, so... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the quality of the image is a little bit questionable right now. <laughs> oh no. It's, it's right. good on my end. Yeah, it's all right. We'll 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 deal with what it is. Um, so, can you pause this for a quick second? Yeah. I just want you to yeah. think about stuff. So, okay. before you actually start the game, here's what you should be trying to think about. Um, first, which so think about top lane, mid lane, and bot lane, and tell me. Uh, who's going to be pushing so like is the teemo going to wait is it a yeah okay check out jungle is the teemo going to be pushing or the tom kench is the xeroth or the talon going to be pushing and then like same thing for the bot lane um the xeroth will probably be pushing because he can push waves really easily and then uh teemo and tom kench i'm actually not sure i'm, I'm assuming teemo because he has range and then um, I'm on comms with the orange support. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. That, it does, yeah. It's always nice to, like, know information from uh, a lane and stuff, but... Um, for the bot lane, I'm not exactly sure. I think Caitlyn can push out if she's good. I think she can push. Spoiler alert, they do push really hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and also having uh, Orn in your party kind of changes things a little too. So the reason I'm, I'm making you think about this is because Evelyn doesn't have to start a blue buff every single game. Okay. Um, Evelyn could actually choose to start Wraiths and then do red buff and then go blue and gank bot lane. Okay. So, before the game starts, just ask yourself, like, is the enemy jungler going to want to invade me? If the answer is yes, 
you want to do something crafty like start red side um okay. and basically like you know if bot lane is going to be pushing if they need help maybe just start red side and then go help bot lane but whatever that's like that's like really important for a jungler what what did you say your role was before because i'm not support. sure support okay yeah um it's really important for a jungler to pick their path in accordance to what's going to happen in the game and it's kind of hard you're not always going to be right but basically you want to try and do as best as you can early game because okay. starting starting blue buff every single game sometimes you're going to get screwed over like people are going to invade you um right yeah all right so all right i just wanted to say that you can go ahead and start playing the replay again yeah. chat are you uh, I think it's actually okay -ish. It's, a, it's a little bit bad quality, but... Alright, so they're invading you. But that's fine. Nobody died. What do you like to do as Evelyn? Like, what what has your experience been? I know you said you played four games only, but like, in those four games at least, what is your experience like with her pre-level 6? Okay, so, uh, pre-level 6, I basically just look for for the lane that's got the best and most reliable CC and then just see if they if their enemy laners push up um, but like in one of the games an Udyr in invaded me and he chased me all the way to turret and I killed him because I charmed him under turret so like I don't know <laughs> it's a weird game man okay <laughs> oh okay first comment you don't have to use a potion here Okay. You can keep going, but I'm just going to say, uh, do you know how to leash wraiths? No. Okay, we're going to have to, I'll show you this uh, after we watch this game. Very important. Okay. Evelyn can heal to full HP from wraiths while doing red buff. Okay. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm going to show you so many secrets right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like old old Evelyn when I play this, so that's why I'm kind of like trying to run around them. Old Evelyn uh, did the same stuff too, so. Okay. No, Q, Q the wraith <laughs> camp, please. Oh, you actually are doing the wraith camp. Okay, I still. <laughs> actually, right here is really good. You kite these guys around too, right? Yep. Amazing. Yeah, I try to terribly totally fine and um while you're doing that you need to throw in an auto okay you did it there you need to just throw in an auto attack or two to uh, make it go faster okay i like that ward i call those the safety wards um one thing that i would say is never do um two of the little camps before you take red buff the okay. reason why is because if the enemy jungler can invade you and do invade you, it's going to be really bad for you. You want to do your double buffs as fast as you can um, just to prevent any kind of shenanigans from the enemy jungler. So then just go like buff wolves buff or something? Yeah. Okay. Generally, you want to take the second camp next to the buff that you start with. So if you're starting red buff, you would do uh, wraith second and if you're starting blue buff you would do wolf second. The reason why is because you're probably going to be ganking around the... like if you take red second you're going to be ganking top or mid usually and it's nice to have extra farm on that side of the jungle. Okay. And um, on that note you may even want to skip wolves if you're playing against like a Jarvan or an Elise or Rengar somebody that can kill you at your red buff you can just skip wolves and wraiths and just do your red right away and then okay. go farm if you want to alright okay so let's keep going let's see what happens here what are you thinking while you're ganking right now uh, right now I'm just kind of like looking at the lanes and I seen that like everybody's kind of pushed up except bot lane, but I'm like farthest away from it, so. Yeah. 
And it's totally okay if something like this is happening. It's totally fine to just abandon your original plan of like ganking top or, or mid and just going straight to bot. I think that's what I end up doing. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's see. The enemy cleared everything except for Gromp. He did that pretty fast, too. Oh, well, actually, you took an, an extra scuttle bug, and then he's taking the scuttle bug. So right now, um, because of how pushed up bot lane is, you pr and if you want to gain bot lane, you shouldn't be doing the camps. The reason okay. being is because you want to be full HP when you're ganking, and um, the faster you do it, the better it is. Because like the laners are going to be lower experience relative to you, so like you don't want them to hit level four or something like that, or like t level two to level three. Um, and in general, you want to be if there's a gank opportunity, gank first then farm. It's always like gank then farm, gank then farm. Right. Okay. Cool. I I know this because I'm the support that's usually raging at our jungler, saying like, you know, the the camp will always be there, but the positioning won't be. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, dude. Exactly. Ah, oh, feels bad, man. Your bot lane died. If you're going to gank the bot lane, you generally want to take a. Uh, Oh, actually, you kind of got lucky. The ward expired right before you went in. <laughs> Feels good. Nice. Um, but you generally want to take the blast cone. It gives less information to the enemy because you just show up in there, the bush on the bottom there. Okay. Yeah. And like I. Sorry, what were you going to say? I was gonna say like I know I know because I've also been co getting coaching for like at least two and I know like one of those things I probably I I forgot to do in this game but like when the Cho'Gath showed top I should have been looking at like what his, like what his buffs are and his CSs. Yeah, it's gonna be harder to do now because I don't know if you know that what happened to the jungle but uh, all jungle camps now count as four creep score. So all you would be able to tell is like he would have let's say 28. Wait, how many did he take? He took uh, one, two, three, four, five, six camps. So six times four, 24. He would have 24 CS, and you'd be able to tell tell that he t killed six camps in the jungle. Right now we're both 28 farm. Okay, yeah, cause he uh, when I when you were when you mentioned that he was doing gr uh, Gromp. Right. So that's the 28th one that he got. So basically, before, it was super important to do that kind of stuff because you wouldn't know which camps he did depending on how much CS he had. If he had, like, 21 or 22, I forgot what it is, CS, that means he cleared his entire jungle. Um, right right now, I'm, I'm, I am I'm smited the chickens just because I just wanted to get six. Like, I'm, like, trying to go, like, go as fast as possible. Do you have blue smite? No, I I got the wisp first. Okay. If you don't have blue smite, it doesn't matter. You could use your smite on whatever, whenever you get health and stuff. And especially if you have, like, two stacks of smite, or, like, you're about to have two stacks of smite, it's definitely a good idea. Um, now, press tab again. Um, you have two wards, right? right. So, when you were ganking bot lane... There's, okay, I'll say this in a different way. Between around level 3 and around level 5, you should just look to go take a scuttle crab, and while you're doing that, drop your wards to help your laners out. Okay. That's going to be your optimal time. It's, um... You can save somebody's life by just dropping a ward next to wraiths, let's say. Right. And, um... I am... I don't do this all the time, so like, it's kind of bad for me to be like telling you, oh, you should, you have two wards in your in your inventory. That's bad, but like, it's true. We all need to improve on that. So now that I hit level six, now I'm just like looking for ganks. How much gold do you have? Press X. 
Oh, you just recently bought. No, that, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, dude, I love ganking bot lane when I just hit level 6. And, um... Uh, that ult was questionable, I know. I was just, like, trying to get as much damage as possible no, because... It's, fine. it's okay. Yeah, I know. It's like... I, I don't think they were in the execution range. Um, right. You will never kill somebody using your ultimate at level 6 if they're not in the execution range. So you could be a little bit patient on that. Uh, something I could say about that gank is you did it really well where you positioned yourself behind them and then you W'd them. They didn't have anywhere yep. to run. Uh, you can use your E to automatically proc your charm. That's something coming from me because I can't land my Qs. <laughs> so okay. um, you can use your E, or if you don't want to use your E, you can also auto attack. I find myself doing that a lot level three when they don't, when they still see me. Uh, if I'm ganking okay. level three, it might be better to proc it with the E or the auto attack, just as a heads up. Okay. And um, I'm go I'm gonna show you this because uh, hold on a second, because I got flame for this. Okay. <laughs> so, um, oh, I'm right here, and I seen that the Talon wants to dive, but like he's not pushing the wave, and I'm like pinging the wave. Cause I go around, like I like around to the here, mm -hmm. and then he just ends up dying, and then and I'm just like, all right, well, I can't really do anything. Talon can't do anything right now. He does not have the HP to be diving or anything, right? Um, right. You. It's a very. If you had flash up, you might be able to do it. Actually, something that you might be able to do here. Like, if you were where Talon is right now, you can actually walk up to uh, almost the tower without him seeing you because you can use the towers like... Oh, dude, can you actually get this? Oh, dude, he's just bad. No, don't, don't worry about that. He literally died. He should have left and let you try to kill him. There's no reason for him to stay around, you know? Right. Yeah, so the way that you approach, you can pretty much stay invisible un up until you're right next to the tower there. Okay. And I feel the same way all the time, dude. Don't feel bad when your teammates flame you. If you really, if you look at it and you're like, oh, I'm really not sure if that's right, just assume that they're totally wrong. They don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I was positioning that, right? Because I was, like, ready to go behind the tower and just kill him if he was going to, like, try to recall. Bye, Jonas. Have a good one. Sorry, I just, I'm looking at chat really quick. Uh, actual Mimic, I think on a scale of 1 to 10, how much I like Evelyn, I think I like her at like a 8.5. I really like the rework. There's some quirks with it, but in general, I think it's really good. Uh, difficulty, I th think that it's going to be like a 6 or a 7. I don't think it's like as difficult as playing a Zed or, you know, one of those other super mechanically heavy guys, but in general, once you get used to your E range, once you get used to your positioning with camouflage and kind of understanding when you need to ult and when you don't need to ult, then it's going to be okay. She's still hard, but it's, it's not too bad. Alright, back to the VOD. Alright, so I'm gonna come for another gank because I know they don't have sums. Mm hmm. And have you bought after getting those kills? You have not. So, this is good. I mean, this is great. Every time they're using summoner abilities, I don't know if you hit that ulti. I think you didn't hit that ulti. I did, but you then did? Lucian okay. just, you know. Because I couldn't kill him. That's fine. Um, as long as I hit mean... that ultimate, that's fine. I just couldn't see it because of the textures or whatever. Of the resolution, I couldn't see it. So. I'm just helping, like, I'm just trying to get first turret. Mm -hmm. I've seen that Zareth is missing, so I'm just like, I don't know where they are, but. You don't have to worry about them. After you pushed out the bot lane, 
generally you're you're okayish, and you see that Cho'Goth is mid lane. So if Xerath shows up alone, he might be able to clear the wave, and then you just back off. That's all that's gonna happen. So what you did here is really good. After you hit level six, you're just looking for kills. You're looking to help out your team. You're killing the people that are overextended, and that's really good. You're not really tower diving, which would be kind of bad. You can tower dive if you have your ultimate, but like you're making plays at this point. So, All right, so here's where I get flamed again. Do you have your smite? Yes. Okay. Oh, did Shogoth just walk in there? Yeah. Did he flash he, over? I, no, he just walked in. Because I told them, I'm like, you need to keep him away from me and the dragon. Mm -hmm. Like, he was the only one there, like, contesting it. And Cho'Gath just walked up and ulted smited and got it. <laughs> that so feels bad, man, dude. It's not your fault. <laughs> and I get flamed for it. Uh, <laughs> see, this is why I don't like playing gold. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, jungler? You are supposed to jungler. You win. And then I get those passive-aggressive smite pings. Yep. Mm-hmm. No, no, that's not your fault, dude. Dude, that feels so bad. What are they talking about? <laughs> no, um, I think your job there was to actually call off the dragon in general. Um, because you knew that your team just took a tower, you have a lot of gold, and you didn't have full HP, so... Doing a dragon at that point is somewhat risky. They're all up. Generally, when you go for an objective like that, you want to like kill one of them first, or at least make them back. And you're strong enough to do that, so there's no reason to risk a 5v5 at dragon, especially if you're not full HP. I don't think it was, because we killed somebody bot, and then we went to drag. We, yeah. Well, we got the tower and then went to drag. Exactly. So, the time, the death timers are really short, at this point in the game so it's like if you choose to do the tower then that's fine you get first tower goal you get a lot of gold but then going and staying and doing more like a dragon it starts to become risky and you can take a look here you can um, go back to where you guys took the tower and see what how long it took for the enemy bot lane to get back um, Something, if you're like really try hard, something that you can do is right after you kill them and you start pushing. Whoa. I don't know why. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> it's done that to me before in replays. I don't know why, dude. Plus 122, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so pause here. Look at the enemy team. Uh, their support is at the tier 2 tower. Their ADC is at the inhib tower, and you guys are just deciding to rotate to Dragon. Your Orn doesn't have HP, and your Lucian is low on mana. Um, so then, in instead of Dragon, what should I have done here? Just kind of like collapsed on mid then. You have you just got first tower gold, and okay, so press tab, press tab, and then press X. You'll see how much gold you have. You have 1,503 gold. Um, your options right now are farm until you can finish your... Wait, no, you can finish your jungle item because you have Aether Wisp. You literally back the fuck up and you go spend that money. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like, it's, I have that same problem a lot of the games where I have like 4,000 gold. Well, it's usually more like 2,000 plus gold in my inventory. And I forget to back yeah. and I try to do more stuff. You want to be powerful, dude. You want to have that AP. And you just have to, like, remember, once you have enough gold to buy your Runic Echoes, you generally want to back and buy it. Okay. I swear it's the Moby Syndrome where I feel like I can just go to another <laughs> lane really fast. Yeah, dude. I do the I same totally thing with Elise. I'll get, like, 3k gold with Elise and I just won't back. <laughs> Yeah, and the problem, okay, so what should be happening right now, and you could be telling your teammates this kind of stuff, right? You guys got first tower gold, your bot lane is supposed to 
back you're supposed to back everybody's supposed to spend their gold and then mid lane go or sorry bot lane goes mid or top and then the mid laner or top laner goes bot lane so it's too high elo for this <laughs> they don't know how to do that <laughs> All right. Well, there's like <laughs> if you suggest it to them, generally I think people do it. So you don't have to, right? You can you cannot do that, and maybe like telling them something new is just gonna confuse them, and they'll f end up feeding somehow. I mean, um, I am on comms with the orange, so I mean, I could just tell them like get your butt top, and then Lucian exactly. will probably follow them. Yeah, and you have to like you have to type to the top laner, be like, do recall. Recall go bot lane, you know, and they usually like soul curious listen. If you tell them to go do something, they're like, yeah, 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 dude, this, this fucking 200 elo, dude. This guy knows what he's talking about. He's challenger. So <laughs> <gotta do> <laughs> um, so yeah, you you don't if you overstay, like you have a lead right now. If you overstay, you give the enemy a chance who just backed and bought items to fight you on even terms. And you never want to give them that opportunity. When you're super ahead, you always want to be more powerful than them. Okay. All right, so, so I'll yeah. play this again, and you can watch how Cho'Gath just, you know, <laughs> takes the. And it's fair. Look, they have full HP bars. They still have ultimates. Um, you don't have full HP bars. You don't have full mana bars. You don't have your ultimate. Like, this is just straight up risky. And Caitlyn doesn't make it in time, but does it really matter? Like your your mid laner has 33% HP, your jungler, or I mean your uh, support has like 25%. That's why this went poorly. But it's right. definitely your uh, job as a jungler to understand this kind of stuff. So when your team says, "Oh, let's do dragon, let's do dragon," and you think to yourself, "Like, wait, they just all are going to be coming back." This is a bad idea. Just spam ping retreat or whatever the fuck and make your team go back. If you're not doing it, your team will not do it. They'll be too scared. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Alright, so you bought your jungle item. Very good. Uh, you could. I don't know if you have enough gold, but buying pink wards is good too. I do it. I know. I, I didn't do it this time, but <laughs> no, I dude. do. I swear, I buy a lot of pink wards. Dude. I don't buy pink wards either, so <laughs> it's fine. I'm just, I know it's what you're supposed to do, so I'm gonna say it. <laughs> um, here, since they're pushing, you might have been able to get further behind them before you go in, but he might. Okay, he fed anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, generally, if you can get behind the enemy, it's super nice because it kind of guarantees your W proc. Well, I knew the target didn't have flash, and he's like immobile, so. Mhm. Mm that's fair. No, that's fair. Oh, and you have I'm boost of mobility. To... Okay, so check this out. In a normal game where you don't have boost of mobility, oh god. Uh, by the way, this try is not cancer. try not to go top lane versus a Teemo. <laughs> 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 you just, you just don't want to ever walk into. This is his. This is you know how you have the jungle. Teemo has the top lane. You don't fuck with Teemo in the top lane. Dude, I got so mad at this dude because I do die here. Does Caitlyn just out like kites both of us? Uh, play it. Dude, I I know it's it's terrible. Oh no, it wasn't even the Teemo that killed you. It was the fucking Caitlyn chilling around the mushrooms. What the hell? Does she die? I, no. <gasps> oh my god, does he get ulted? Okay, she doesn't have ulti. Good. Um, so that's a little bit of a feels bad man. As soon as you start hitting those mushrooms, I think you should have just backed off. Called off the play. Cause like, they they see you coming, you're super slow, you're getting damage and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I learned um, my lesson. So, I can't see too well. Does the enemy have any MR right now? Uh, no. Nobody, no. uh, Cho'Gath just has, he finished his jungle item and he got the, uh, whatever this is called, the Crystalline Bracer or whatever, mm -hmm. and then Teemo just is, like, building Bork. Yeah, okay. So, the most and... important thing is that they don't have MR. Yeah, Tark doesn't, he just has HP and, and he has AP too, he's building the sensor, so. 
So you're kind of pretty even right now. I would say that building haunting guys in this kind of situation is really good. It's going to give you the most damage and survivability. So I zoned Tarek off. I, I learned that one. <laughs> oh, with the W. Yeah, that was really good. Let's see. Dragon's down. Top lane is getting pummeled, but... Oh, you know what? If you do want to gank a Teemo, the safest way to do that is walk through lane where the minions usually walk. Okay. Because he can't put mushrooms over there, because the minions will just trigger the mushrooms, and it's, like, much safer. Try not to walk into the bushes. Try to stay in, like... Uh-oh. Oh, okay, okay. He just deceived for a little bit. That was the enemy team. And if I, like, stand still for a little bit, it's probably me arguing with this talent. <laughs> <laughs> Feels bad, man. Okay. Let's look at this gank. W. He tries to go in. I'm assuming you're just really trying to help him because he's yelling at you. I, oh. like, flash because I thought I'd be in alt range and then I just yeah. fucking die. Oh, no. You could have ulted, um... I'm like the side. spam pinging him. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little yeah, spam ping. Yeah, yeah. If you're having like disputes like that with somebody, generally I I would just avoid them. Don't gank for them because it's gonna make you feel bad. It's gonna make him feel bad. Everybody's gonna play worse. But that's too bad. Um, this is a little bit of a mechanics thing, but when you were ulting to get away from under the tower, you could have angled yourself to appear on the other side of the wall, like to the left. Okay. Um, cause you knew you didn't have minions, so you can't really ult under the tower. Although he was kind of tanking it for you, he probably could have saved your life if he tanked one more shot, but whatever. We won't, we won't talk about that. That was just a feels bad man moment. Dude, my charm just like got off too. I was like so oh mad. Oh my god, and he lives too? No. <gasps> Get him, Orn. Get him, bud. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh no, we're diving again. <laughs> oh no. Oh, got him. Okay, good. Orn By redeemed way, that, himself. My my friend who's playing Orn just changed his username from Toxic Shen to Toxic Orn. I see. Very good. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't get nerfed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so, it's the mid game. Your job right now is pretty easy. It's just look for kills. Um, the only thing I would say is try not to tower dive too much. Tower diving is pretty dangerous, and if you do... Uh, like the situation like you were in last time just ult out early Okay, yeah, it it's better to blow your Flash blow your uh, ulti and like just wait for it to come back up than to die because of a bad play Ooh, Nice nice dude feels good man Yeah, so this is perfect. You just want to keep killing people in the mid game before until the enemy team groups up you want to get a bunch of kills and then go farm, 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 farm. So like right now, don't be shy to just... Oh, I bet you you were typing to that guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, you just want to... It's kind of like rewarding yourself. You know, At this point, taking the jungle is like rewarding yourself because once you kill a bunch of their enemies, your team theoretically should be able to push and do all this stuff by themselves. If there's still more kills for you to get, if you're really high HP, you could try to look for more kills. But getting jungle farm is really strong. It gives you a lot of ex experience in particular. So you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You got the kills mid and then you fell back and you're fucking trigger typing at this guy. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I don't even remember what he was saying, dude. We were going back and forth, though. It was bad. If that ever happens to you, like, just mute them. If you can't, if you have the, the self-control to just mute them, you totally should. 
Sadly, I don't, just because my friends are toxic too, so it's like, I, I'm, I'm so used to that behavior. I mean, I don't, like, get reported usually, I'm not, like, too bad, but... Mm -hmm. Check this I, out, I'm dude. Just... I'm just gonna say right now, if you really want to climb, and if you think this is, like, holding you back where you, like, get into fights with people and stuff, just get into game slash mute all. That's, I used yeah. to do that for like months on end sometimes. I would just mute every single person before they even said a thing to me. But I totally understand. Me and my friends are the same way. We just talk shit to each other all the time. I die guy? here. I, um, I thought I could get Zareth, but... You didn't have your ultimate, right? No. I don't think so. If you're looking... If the enemy is grouped up like that and you don't have your ultimate... Um, you probably don't want to go in. So it's like, Evelyn has this thing where if she she has her ultimate, you can take risks. If she doesn't have her ultimate, you need to look for picks. You have to understand like with, when to switch your mindsets in that kind of way. I don't know if it matters, but I also built the Void Staff. So kind of like what you said. Yeah, Void Staff is going to help you... Um, with your all-ins against people without proccing your W. I'm actually, so, you know what? Maybe if you had like different runes and maybe Sork Shoes, that would have worked out. I'm not sure. It's kind of second nature to me nowadays when I can and when I can't just one-shot somebody. Oh man, this is so crazy right now. Do you have your ult? I think you do. I missed that. Oh fuck. Get it, get it. Yes! Team. Red. Fire Dragon for the team feels good, man. I would have I would have went straight back into that fight. There were so many people low health. Um Something that is really strong on Evelyn. And something that I would do in that situation is once you have your stealth, just skirt around them. You don't have to go in, but if you just walk around them and kind of get vision for your team, it could be really helpful. Sometimes you'll okay. find yourself being able to get kills. Um, and you can practice that stuff just like all the time. If sometimes, let's say, there will be two towers gone in mid lane, the first thing I do after I respawn is run straight down up to their tower right before they can see me to get information. Okay. You're like... The scout aspect of Evelyn is super strong. Okay, I wanna see... Do you guys take many team fights here? I can't see how many kills go down. Cause... It's good that you're still farming. I mean, this Talon's trying to take it. What's he trying to take? My farm. Oh. <laughs> Feel bad, man. Oh, mushroom. Um, against a Teemo. Oh, dude. I actually would not take red or, or uh, sweeping lens. Oracle. It feels really bad, but it's it's really not good on Evelyn just because it reveals you. When I used to play old Evelyn, I used to take the blue oracle trinket. Uh, scrying orb or whatever? Yeah, because then, then I could like keep an eye on objectives and stuff better. Scrying orb is fine. I just, I like my uh, regular wards, so I keep that one. But you could take scrying orb. I mean, in my elo, 80 carries don't get it anyway. Don't you love how positive I am about my... that, man. No, dude, I totally feel that. Like, I, the reason I play jungle so much is because I want to be in control of my game, right? And junglers have that early game control. If you want to be in control of the game early, you play jungle. Look at this guy, dude. This is so toxic. <laughs> like, this is actually so toxic. I mean, he ended up leashing it for you, right? What a nice guy. Alright, um, are you trying to go back to get money? I think I'm, I think I'm getting a sheen, which a sheen. I know I probably shouldn't be doing, but... Um, if you do build a Lich Bane, do the AP components first, they do more damage. Okay. But... I'm still thinking like Israel, where it's like you build the sheen first. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the other thing is Lich Bane generally works better with more AP heavy stuff. So if you build like a Haunting Guys, uh, Lich Bane will deal slightly less damage. It's still good, but it's something to keep in, in mind. If you're building okay. Magic Penetration, Lich Bane will do a little bit less damage. So like, I can't find an opening here. I'm pretty useless, I feel like. Well, what's your... I mean, your team died, so that's kind of the problem there. You might Here, have been... I'll, re I'll rewind it a bit. Yeah, rewind it a little bit. And show me what your team is doing at that point, before they die. Uh, go up, go up. Just, like... Like, I can't really defend the turret, you know what I mean? Mm. Like I think... So, check this out. I think what you're supposed to be doing there is you need to get behind the enemy team. You were staying like on the side of the, you were staying like on the right side of them. But if you just get into the mid lane behind them, you're gonna have an opportunity to um, kill Zeroth. And the way that you do that is one, you use the towers that have already died to block their vision, and two, oh my god, dude, that Cho'Gath is disgusting right now. I hate that shit. Flash, uh, Stoneborn, or Stone stone Plate into ult is fucking terrifying. Um, but yeah, you always, not always, 90% of the time you want to be behind the enemy team when they're pushing mid. Uh, the reason why is because when you put W on, let's say there's Zeroth, his first instinct is going to be... And he, it will be because he's golden, he's bad, is going to be to run away and he's going to run towards his base when he does that which is where you're going to be and then you kind of like get a pick from behind the team fight. Wow this like, really devolves really quickly. Um, I was going to say like uh, I feel like I get peeled off really fast though too because I have done that before in other games where I'll go behind them but like my team doesn't isn't I don't think they see that I'm there so then I just get focused yeah uh, it's really difficult to pull it off but basically what you're looking for is use W on the enemy most important person on the enemy team or their support if their support is something like a Lulu or a Janna, somebody that can peel you really hard you can just W them and try to like charm them and then go for somebody else um, what you're looking for is maybe not even to kill one of them but to one engage for your team a fight that's going to be in your favor and two to deal a lot of damage to the all the champions on their team with your ultimate um, so like, in this situation, let's say your your team is like flaming, they're not doing anything, they're not engaging, right? You have to do something to try and save the game, and you're going to be able to do that a lot better if you're coming from a direction that the enemy team doesn't expect. Okay. Uh, so getting behind them might have been a little bit better in that situation. Now... It's kind of sad because, you know, your team was arguing and um, they got a little bit ahead. So it, it's hard to really kind of say, oh, you could have you could have won this game, you know, if you did this or this. How, like some games you just can't win, but you have to just focus on doing your best. Yeah. And... Um, the one thing I would definitely say is if you're trying to climb and get better, don't type at your players or whatever. You can ping for them, tell them what to do, whatever, whatever. But getting into disputes with them, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help them. It's just going to make you feel bad. Um, at least that's how it is for me. I just It just makes me feel bad whenever I type. Yeah. So I just like, I press enter, I start typing a message, and I just delete it. And I'm like, fuck it, it's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Okay, so to recap, during that game you had a very good early game. You might have been able to do. No, I wouldn't even say that your pre-level six was bad. Was bad because you did go out and you like did scuttle bugs. You tried to see what was going on, and 
The only thing is I you didn't it. drop your wards. I got a um, kill priest six too. Yeah, so that was really good. Any, if you get a kill pre six, the game is like so much easier. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I would say focus on not tower diving. And if you do tower dive, sure as hell don't do it with a teammate that has no HP. Don't tower dive by yourself. It's not going to work very well. And usually if you're tower diving, you're tower diving top lane or bot lane. Um, okay. Because like tower diving top lane as Evelyn actually feels really good because most of the time the enemy jungler isn't going to be around there. And you can tank the tower and then with your ultimate reset aggro and let your top laner finish them off. Okay. Oh, and you should be really familiar with that with the least because you reset aggro with your E all the time, right? Yep, I'm so used to using. That's why I'm probably pretty dive heavy because I'm so used to the repel. Mhm. Mm yeah, you have to be a little bit more careful on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I fucking hate that shit about Elise. She just like walks right under your tower, not giving a fuck, <laughs> and kills you. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um. As far as your item builds go, you might need to like remember a little bit more stuff, diversify your build. But that's just whatever. I can, if you need me to like write you up some things about the items or something in that game. Uh, you might have wanted to go for a little bit of an earlier Banshees. They, I think, built no MR, so Void Staff is a little bit feels bad, man. Uh, okay. I mean, it does a lot of damage, it's cost efficient, but pretty much like a Haunting Guys, if they don't have any MR, a Haunting Guys does almost the same thing as a Void Staff. Okay. Um, and against a Teemo and a Xeroth, and what else? Cho'Goth. What was their support? I don't remember. Tark. Tark. All those guys have CC, right? Yeah. So you want a Banshee Veil against that shit. If I see okay. that much CC enemy on the enemy team, I'm building my Banshees really fast. Okay. Um, and if you build more Banshees, you're going to feel a lot more useful in team fights as well. Okay. That's probably what I need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, because that like was like my biggest. That was my biggest like question or concern was like, because it, it felt like every game it was like when it's a five v five and I can't get around fast enough, mm -hmm. then it's over because I'm you know I'll just die with everybody else because like if my tanks die too fast to the point where I can't get behind somebody, it, it, like I can't. They'll, they'll just focus me down and kill me. Yes, so 100%, and in a big team fight in the end, here's what you need, and maybe this is what you're looking for. Don't try to hate spike them, it takes too long. Um, okay. Try to get your W off, but usually it's in conjunction with the flash. Otherwise, oh, I have something perfect for you, okay, I just thought of something, I'm like getting shivers because this is something I do all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's hear let's hear the diamond strat all right so i was just gonna say uh, to finish off my previous thought uh, don't cue them too much maybe like one hate spike uh it used to be easier with a lot of cooldown reduction because the more cooldown reduction you have the faster your hate spikes go off i don't know if you knew that uh, but basically you're just looking to e ult them you don't have to kill anybody but your e ult if you like hit it on their Xeroth or on their ADC, it's going to bring them down to like 25% and they can no longer continue fighting. So at that point, your team might get brave and be like, holy shit, wait, they have no HP, maybe we should help Evelyn. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and so what you're doing is, okay, you have two options. If you're behind them, you can either carry and then ult in such a way that when you reappear, you reappear right next to your team. Uh, and now you're safe. And now you can try to do stuff with hate spike and whatnot, be a team player. Or you can ult away from your team towards their nexus and re-stealth and try to do something sneaky after that. You don't have to one-shot them if they're all clumped up right away. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Um, the only other question I have then is, uh, being somebody, like, because I feel like, go, like, initiating, like, if you, uh, charm them or, like, put the heart above them, and mm -hmm. then you're, like, like, say, like, you had my positioning where you're going down bot lane and you're, like, walking with them, kind of, and, yep. and then, like, I feel like I can't get into range to E before, before they see me. 100% they so what you have to do is you have to give them no escape options uh, in a way that they have to walk towards you in order to get to safety uh, so oh oh oh, oh. Um, and the other thing all right so there's two things here um, <laughs> if you can get behind them and then W them so they have to walk towards you to get to safety now if you can't do that and you're, you're kind of saying the situation is you're walking alongside them you're like you're like kind of shoulder to shoulder but not quite next to them for the E right right that's when blue smite comes in uh, okay your blue smite is about the same range as your camouflage range so what you do is as soon as they see you, you charm them, blue smite them, and then you walk up to them. They don't have enough movement speed to get away. Sometimes, like, if they don't flash, you'll be in E range, and if they do flash, then you it's your job to land your Q. Okay. Um, yeah, and I can show you examples of that in a little bit, but basically, you use blue smite. That's the answer. Okay. Now... For late game team fights, there's this one strat that I figured out playing against Twitches. Uh, I don't know how much you've played against Twitch, but he is an infuriating character because... Yep, I hate him. <laughs> so he'll just go into stealth and then stand in, in the middle of the scene. You have no chance of... like engaging on him until he shows up but by the time he shows up it's too late because he's like ulting and your team has no health left right yep so what i realized is you have to use your camouflage to scout around their jungle and not the jungle sorry scout around mid lane and put down your wards so you catch them right before they all group up to team fight um okay. Something that I love doing is after a big team fight, let's say you lived, let's say like three of your guys died, three of their guys died, either their mid laner or ADC died, right? You know yeah. their death timer. You know when he's going to respawn. If you just stand right under his like base walls, you know the big walls that is like forms a circle around their base. Yeah. If you stand next to there, they'll just walk right out, and then you one-shot them. <laughs> oh my god. Um, that's, like, really satisfying, because they're not expecting you to be there. They're in the mindset of, like, all right, I'm walking out of my base, I'm grouping up with my team, and then we can go team fight, and you kill them before any of that can happen. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of one solution, but... For the team fights, I think the solution is Banshees, wait for your flash, wait for your ultimate, and use the towers to hide behind and kill them like that. Okay. Uh, you said you had like a list of questions. Do you? Well, th well, that was those were kind of like the ones. I mean, those okay. were like the big ones. Other, I mean, other ones were were just like, you know, um. Like, how is my positioning in the replay and stuff like that? But, I mean, he kind of already answered that. Yeah. Uh, in the replay, your positioning... Let me let me think again. Yeah, no, you your stealth was totally fine. You could uh, get a little bit more behind them. I kind of recently have been having that issue where I think, like, oh, I'm so strong, I can just run at them. But it's really important to get behind your enemies. Because the first reaction to getting a W on top of their head. So when you use W on somebody, the thing that goes through their mind is, I have to get to safety. And half the time, safety in their mind is towards their base. So that's where they're going to be running. Um, okay. 
<laughs> it's actually really funny. Some of the games when it was like the first or second week after Evelyn came out, uh, I would get people with that trick like two, three, four times in a game, and eventually when I W'd them, they would actually run towards my base because <laughs> they knew I was behind them. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was really funny. I was like, holy shit, they're learning! Oh my god, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and then I just go on the other side and then they run at me again. It was hilarious. Um, but it's kind of like, it's your job to figure out which direction are they going to run when you W them. And then it's also your job to already be there. <laughs> right. Okay. And um, in the jungle, just from my experience, people usually uh, turn around. So if they're running, let's say, towards Baron through the jungle and you W them, they're going to start running away from Baron. So you could kind of think of it that way. It it's okay. hard to tell. Like You'll get used to it with practice, basically. Yeah, I need to play more games, too. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Always you need to play more games. I'm just trying to think of everything... All right, um, that's late game team fights. I'm just gonna say a couple of things about the early game because okay. I think it's the most crucial part. And uh, I'll also send you. Let me find. I I wrote a little like paragraph about this, and I think it'll be really useful for you to kind of read. Okay. Um. Nope. Not this one. Okay, here we go. Should I just stop screen sharing? Uh... Sure. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't, shouldn't really matter. Uh, I'll go... I'll try to find a couple examples of team fights for you from my games as well. If you okay. want to take a look at my... Um, stream really quick. Because I know I have plenty of those, and like it's going to be easier to show you an example of a good team fight rather than try to tell you what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but at the same time, here is the link that I wanted to show you. And I'll give you a brief description of what I'm talking about there. But um, So I told you that before the game starts, you need to think about what which lanes are going to be pushing. Right, which lanes are going to win, which lanes are going to lose. The second part about that is you need to think about how does the enemy jungler impact the game. Uh, so to take your game as an example, Cho'Goth is not the strongest like invader. We could say that. He's probably not going to invade you. And his ganks are going to be like all right, right? Right. Um, so when it comes to choosing your jungle pathing, because you know he's not going to invade you, you're quite free to start whatever you want. If you want, you can start blue buff because that's what you've been doing. That's fine. Um, if you really wanted to gain bot lane, which I think might have been a cool idea that game because you're duo queued with a bot laner. You could start red buff, or even better. Well, it used to be really good to start wraiths back back before the new preseason stuff came out. Now it's not as good because they changed. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, are you watching my stream right now? Uh, no, I didn't turn that shit on. Yeah, turn that shit on right now, and I gotta show you something before I even say anything else. Speak no more, myself. I need to show you the second trick to Evelyn. Very few junglers can benefit from this, but Evelyn 100% is one of them. But yeah, um, when so against a jungler like Cho'Goth, this doesn't really matter as much. But against like an Ezreal, a Shaco, uh, an Elise, a Jarvan, a Rek'Sai, a Rengar, a Lee Sin, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Uh, junglers that are really strong in the early game, you need to predict what pace they're going to take the jungle in, like at, and then match it. So against like an Ezreal and a Shaco, they can choose, so they have the choice to do their blue buff 
or their red buff and then just straight go and invade you right away and I have a perfect example of this that I can show you in a game um, so what you need to do to match that is also start at the buff that they're going to invade and um, like do your jungle do your buffs as soon as possible because that's where they're going to find you right alright hold on wait no I need a you need hunter's talisman for this to work I'll show you a couple of games right now. Have you gotten invaded at all? Um, not. I mean, usually, like my team will meet them. Like, I'm never really yeah. like solo invaded yet. <laughs> no, no, um, not you invading. Has anybody invaded you yet? Not really. No. I mean. Usually, because like what I'll do is if I'm if I know if I'm against a champion that can invade me, I'm playing Elise because I know I can one v one them. But ah, I see. So yeah, no, I haven't really like played against like an aggressive jungler as Evelyn yet. I see. Okay. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I'm still in stealth because minions don't do stealthy anymore, so it's healing. All right, so I'll get back to that thought in just a second. Look at this. This is how. Let's say I did blue buff right now. I'm coming to take my red buff and I'm low HP. Here's how you do it. You throw a Q at Wraiths, do your hate spikes, throw another Q at Wraiths, put W on red buff. Oops, I didn't mean to aggro it. As soon as you can, you aggro red buff and then like just make sure to hate spike Wraiths one more time and then stand right here. And look, the Wraiths are just gonna keep running back at you. Your hate spikes are gonna keep damaging them. And you're gonna keep healing off of them. Okay. I'm not using any potions right now, and I'm able to take red buff without taking damage. If I was level two, I would be even like better off right now. Like this is a level one Evelyn doing this shit. And sometimes even if you just have to heal, oops, I missed. You could just Q them and back off. And it, the thing is that while your hunter's talisman has a debuff on the wraiths, you're healing 25 health per second. You could actually... Oh my god, I keep doing that shit. You can see the, the health pop up. Like, this is crazy. This means that Evelyn doesn't have to use health potions in the jungle. And, um... I can reset the game for you and show you how I actually do the clears. Like, no troll. Alright. Oops. I summoned a target dummy here. Clear. Fast forward. So, leashing wraiths is really important uh, to stay healthy. Okay. So, we always start Q. Where are the minions? What the hell? Did I press something that made minions not spawn? I don't know. Okay, two seconds. Um, usually the top laner will help you. If the top laner isn't helping you, then you need to use a health potion. You can see what I'm showing you right now, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So if the top laner was helping you, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't need to use a potion here. Um. WQ. And like this is. What's the link to our Discord? You could generate one yourself, Avanti. It's not. Just go to any of the channels and click the little person plus button, or like the. There's a button next to the channel name, and you can generate one. Okay, so look, I walk into here, I queue this, queue it again, use W over there. Q this, and then Q this. So in total, three Qs on the wraiths, and then I stand here. And I did it much better this time, and I'm level two, so I'm not using any potions, and I'm staying full HP. And then I smite this to do it faster and be able to gank somewhere. Full HP, no potions, double buffs. Go bot lane, go top lane to gank. Okay, so you're kind of just juggling the aggro by getting the hate spikes on the yes. behind the red buff. Okay. Yeah, 
and they'll keep on resetting because they you have a dot on them because of Hunter's Talisman. If you read this, damaging a monster with a spell or attack steals 25 health over 5 seconds and burns them for 20 magic damage. So over 5 seconds they're being burnt. And look, I'll show you right here, they won't really hit you much at all if you're standing here, but they will still heal you. And by the time they come back, your debuff is still on them, so they run back because you aggroed them again. And they'll keep doing that forever. And I mean, you're killing red buff during that time, and you're healing off of them. Like, I don't know, man. When I first figured this out, I saw like a video of a rumble doing this shit. I lost my mind. Because yeah. like, this is a full <laughs> HP clear without potions. Um, Alright, so I need to show you that. That's pretty cool. Uh, now examples of actual games that I can show you really quick. Uh, I played against the Lee Sin here, and I'm super pl proud of my of what I did. So I'll show you. Uh, I think it's no, I don't think it's this game actually. I don't remember if I lost or won. Um, all right, let's look at this. Lee Sin? Nope. Nope. Wait. Okay, yeah, that's still today. Today's the 13th, right? Yeah, okay. Yep. And... Okay, here we go. This guy tried to che cheese me so hard, it's unreal. Like, if you were doing the clear that you were... that I saw you doing in your replay, you would have died, like, three times to this guy. <laughs> Okay. But I'll show you what I did. And like, Lee Sins can do this shit to you. This is why you need to play around it. Because if they just decide to do this shit to you, like invade you very early on in ways that you wouldn't expect, they're gonna kill you. Like, Evelyn doesn't Dude. have the damage. Dude, I've had an Elise game where I played against a Diamond Lee Sin Smurf. Uh -huh. And literally just killed me at every camp I was at. He actually <laughs> knew like where I was going. <laughs> this is what the, this guy tried to do. I'm pretty sure he is a Smurf. He tried to like, he got super butt hurt and left the game eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let me just fast forward here. All right. Um... Okay, my team isn't really watching for me. It's fine. Alright, so here we go. He takes his red buff and that goes straight for my wraiths to kill me at wraiths. Now, what I told myself as I looked at this, I'm like, I'm against the Lee Sin. He has a chance of trolling me. He's probably not gonna try and kill my red buff. Um, I mean, I don't think he's gonna start at blue and then go straight for my red. So I was like, I don't have to start red side. I'll just do blue and then go take red. He expected me to do a regular clear like you were doing, which is blue, uh, wolves, and then red. So he shows up here, and he totally gets disappointed because I'm not even around. I actually, I queue this for extra HP because I have a blue buff. Okay. So he gets fucked. And the reason that I didn't get fucked here is because... I, I was expecting him to try to invade, and I went from my blue straight to here. Now, he tries to gank mid lane unsuccessfully, whatever, and then... Okay, so at this point, I take the second buff, and I saw Lee Sin here, so I'm like, okay, something's, something's fucking wrong here. He's trying to do some crazy bullshit, and I saw that my top lane is a Pantheon, which before the game... When I looked at everything, I'm like, Pantheon versus Trundle, I want to help Pantheon as fast as I can because if he gets a kill early, he's just going to win the game. Right. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll do both buffs 
because one, Lee Sin can invade me, and this helps me against his invade, and then I won't do any camps, and I will gank top right away to help him, because he can win the game with a level one kill. And it ended up playing out that Lee Sin had the similar idea, because he's super aggro, he just wants to win the game before anything even starts. He shows up here, and then I surprise him. I'm here as well, and he like, I don't know, shits his pants. <laughs> so, that's something that you have to keep in mind. Maybe you just skip all your camps and go help a lane. Maybe you start on red side and then, you know, clear one camp like Wraiths and go help your bot lane. It really all okay. depends on what you predict your lanes are going to do. Okay. And this kind of stuff is super important too. My team flames me right now because they like fuck up, but I'm not going to show you the rest of this. <laughs> That's okay. I actually gotta uh, get going too. Okay, no problem. I know. I I was just thinking about that. I've taken up a lot of your time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I'll probably have you like watch more replays as I, you know, crank them out more. And just have play. I'll probably play Evelyn a lot tonight because I have off tomorrow. So. Okay, check this out. Uh, if you're gonna do that, I want you to search yourself up on op.gg and click live game when you're loading into game and then there's going to be a button that shows up on the top right of the scoreboard that you see that says record and hit the record button all right so then you can like watch them on your own time then it's not about watching it on my own time it's that i'll be able to have it in my client and okay um, yeah it'll be better quality because like the the quality yeah. of the replay through the stream it was kind of like questionable you know right true yeah uh, all right Cool. Was this helpful? All right. Yeah. No, it really was. <laughs> I've, uh, I'm gonna be doing that clear tonight and stuff. So uh, yeah, cool. that'll that'll be. I, I might even like just sit in a custom a little bit and just kind of like junk like juggle the wraiths. Definitely but, do uh, that. Figure out where you need to stand. That's the that's the okay. hardest pro uh, part about it all. Cause when you charm red buff, it took me a long time to figure out where to stand because it just kind of like derps around your character model, and then like it's hard to juggle wraiths and that thing at the same time. Right. Yeah. No, you're you're talking to the kid that spent like two like a lot of hours just uh, jungle or uh, what was it kiting kiting camps for Nidalee. Back uh -huh. when she was like really powerful, so oh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm really determined when I when I like learn an efficient clear and stuff. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity, did you did I like spend too much time telling you about different stuff that I know about Evelyn? Would you like, if I was to do this again, would you want me to change the way that I tell you about this stuff or now? No, this works out fine because you're telling me personal info about like your games and stuff, okay. which is great. Cool. Um, yeah, because I know just from myself when you're when I'm telling you all this information, it's gonna be difficult to kind of absorb it all. But something I'm gonna do for you is after the stream is done, I'm gonna make a highlight of this part where we were talking and I'll just send it to you so you'll have like a hyperlink to the video and you can listen to anything I said again because like a hundred percent you didn't catch all of it there's no pro there's no way that like a human can yeah. just sit there for two hours and absorb everything you know um, right right so I'll just give you a link to a highlight and you'll have that okay sounds good all right dude all right, well, thanks so much. <laughs> no problem. Hope it helped. You know, it did. Um, I might, I don't know if you're going to be on tomorrow or when you, whenever you want to do, like, another thing, but uh, I'll probably be playing a lot of games tonight, so then I'll, I'll be recording them on OP.gg. Okay. Then... I am on from, you said that it's, it's 10 p.m. for you right now, right? It is 8 for me it's 8 p.m. for you okay gotcha it's 9 p.m. for me so um, I in your time I'm on from 11 a.m. to uh, 7 p.m. every day and then often I'll also stay later so except okay, for Sundays except for Sundays all right cool that works all right well thank you no problem at all. Good luck, my dude. 
All right. See, see ya. Bye. I feel like I lectured a little bit too much.